Now, I had a consultation today, and I see this often. The lady said, I had a car accident six months ago, and then, or six months previously, and then six months later I had sciatica, and she somehow linked it with the previous accident six months before. How much is trauma play into back pain, and how much is it genetics, and where are the statistics, and what does the research say when it comes to these issues? Okay, well, there's, you will not find a, re, a single good source out of the research literature to answer that question. The only way you can answer that is to spend an, a good number of years and, and having a lot of uh, applied and practical experience just with dealing people and see who does well with certain approaches and who was traumatized and, and who wasn't, and doing the science yourself so, so that you really understand the, the, the various links that exist. So it's up to someone who has a lot of experience, I think, to put it all together to answer that question. You will not find an answer in, in a single book, for example. Okay. However, let's start the, the genetics uh, I, I, component of your question. Um, I, l let me give you an example. Um, not everybody is designed to play golf. Consider a rod, which will be the spine, and you're going to twist that rod. Now, if you had a thick rod or a thick tree trunk and tried to twist it, you would shatter it. But if you had a thin rod, or a narrow, very thin tree, you could twist it and it wouldn't break. And the reason is you wouldn't create high stress. So a thick rod creates a lot more stress than a thin rod for the same uh, amount of bend, shall we say, or twist. Right. So if a person um, has a very slender spine, um, and I see this in, in a lot of the professional golfers. They may look like bigger people on the outside, but when you look at their, their x-rays and their MRs and whatnot, generally speaking, they have a slender spine and open facet joints and whatnot. So in other words, genetics played a role in determining what mechanical variables their, their spine will tolerate. Now, let's take that same golfer's spine and put them in the NFL at middle linebacker. They will not survive because the very features that allow a spine to be good at golf are the antithesis of those that would allow you to survive playing middle linebacker. Those people need big, thick spines with ovoid, or sorry, limacon-shaped discs that can bear the compressive stresses of getting banged around in the NFL. But don't ask those guys to play golf. So you see, if golf was just about being strong, the middle linebackers would be playing on the PGA Tour. But you can't <laughs> find those guys who can hit a, a golf ball very far. Right, right. You, you see the difference? So, so this is why genetics um, predisposes us, us all as to what activities build us up versus which activities tear us down. And that would be different between individuals. But when, you, when you've been looking at it for 30 years, you, you start to get an idea of why every, and I'm rather unique in my career. If you talk to the average family doc and say, well, how many PGA tours or how many Olympic medal sprinters have you looked at or uh, rowers or whatever, they'll probably have to answer and say none. But I'm a bit lucky in that I, I see uh, a number of these different people. And uh, you, when you see enough of them, you start to see patterns emerge. And those patterns tell the story in, in terms of uh, genetics. Right. Okay.